All right, using the principles we've learned already about changing these logarithmic expressions into exponential form, uh, seeing these in exponential form hopefully is a little bit easier for you to solve. Uh, so uh, that will help us in order to graph as well. So if I wanted to exchange this now into an exponential form, I would have 1 half to the power of y equals x. And the reason I do this is so that I can make a table, which will help me to solve this. Now notice it's 1 half to the power of y equals x. So what this means is that I've got to find values of y in order to replace into the equation, and then I'll find its corresponding x value because that's the way this equation is set up. So I'm going to first use these three values, negative 1, 0, and 1, and see where that gets us. So using y is negative 1, I would have that 1 half times to the power of 1, uh, to the power of y rather, which is negative 1, and that will equal my x. Well, if I continue on like this, I have, I would have rather a 2 from the 1 half to the power of negative 1. That's my x value, which I'll replace in the table. I'm going to continue on with the table in order to find coordinate pairs to graph on the graph. Once I have all of them, then I will put them all on the graph. Alright, so there's our three values. Now notice, when y became a positive, that's when we got a fraction here. So, And since this is an exponential function, we know that once we have a fraction, it's just going to get closer and closer to zero. So what we can do is we can go the opposite direction in the negative, so we'll have a negative 2 and a negative 3 and find out what those are. And these are the values I found showing the work. You can see that we just did 1 half to the power of negative 2. You can put that into a calculator. Some of you guys know using the negative exponent rules that we would just reciprocate the 1 half, which would make the exponent positive. You'd have 2 squared, which is 4. Likewise, with this one, you'd have 2 cubed, which is 8. So now that I have these, I could technically change these all now into ordered or coordinate pairs. And then I would graph them on the graph, which, as it turns out, we're going to do. So here's my graph. I'm going to put these all in. I'll go ahead and start with 2, negative 1, which is right here. Then we have 1, 0. We have 1, half 1, which is about right there. Then we've got 4, negative 2, which would be somewhere in this area. And then we have 8, negative 3. So somewhere, I don't know, somewhere like this. So uh, it looks like the graph for this is just a little bit off, but we can still go ahead and graph this. something like this, and uh, the line going up would never touch the y-axis because, once again, notice the x value. Once we had a positive y value, it became a fraction, and it will continue to be small, small fractions as it goes upwards there. Uh, but this graph should do pretty good. Uh, for some of you doing the homework on the computers, this will, look a lot, this will be a lot easier than it is for me drawing it by hand.